Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video, the NJMA Friday for today's first video. So as always on Friday, we're doing our month head look ahead with Japanese and CFSV tomorrow. This is going to take us more or less to the end of May, or certainly into the sort of final week of May. Uh, so running down the clock uh, with these longer range updates now in towards the end of the spring. We haven't had all that much spring so far. We've had that uh, dismal uh, March with the beast from the east. And then we have uh, been sort of trading unsettled and more settled conditions through April. Although it has been a relatively warm month, uh, maybe surprisingly so. Um, and we had the heat wave, of course, around a week ago. Uh, so we'll see what the final month of spring, been a very odd spring, uh, really, but we'll see what the final month of the spring has to say, uh, or what the JMA and the CFSV2 have to say about the final month of spring um, for uh, today's first video. Got three videos coming up today, so once JMA Friday is out of the way, we'll have a look at weather next week's 10 days. There's some very wet weather threatening the southeast of the country and the east on Monday, and would you believe the final day of April might even contain a little bit of snow as well. So I'll have more about that in today's second video update. And then tonight's video, we'll have a look at the Bank Holiday Weekend. We've got the fourth update for the May Day Bank Holiday Weekend. Signs of improvements by then. But I'll say no more and uh, we'll uh, talk about that in today's uh, second and third videos. But starting us off, We've got JMA Frey, so we're going to have a look at the uh, 500 bit of our high dominant flow charts, broken down into weekly pairs from uh, the JMA uh, website. Uh, so on these charts, we're looking at the North Pole view down. First of all, that's the North Pole up the Northern Hemisphere just there. And the middle latitudes of normal house here around there. Uh, Blue extrapolates to low pressure, yellow, orange, and red extrapolates to high pressure. Uh, the same means are broken down to weak periods. The first week period will take us from today, the 27th of April, through to the 4th of May. So we find that we've got uh, above average heights out in the middle part of the Atlantic with this ridge uh, just here. But then we've got a big area of below average heights to our north and then running through the UK and Western Europe. And this is sending the jet stream onto a subway track. We've got a real dip within the 500 millibar flow in the jet stream. So we're under a cold uh, ridge, under a cold trough, I should say there. Uh, we've got a trough of low pressure centered over the UK and Western Europe. The jet stream is to our south. So that looks pretty cold and pretty unsettled, I'm afraid, uh, for the week ahead. The 27th of April to the 4th of May uh, does look like a particularly unsettled and uh, quite cold week to come. We go through to week two, and this takes us from the 4th through to the 11th of May, and uh, still got a trough close to us, but this time it's more out towards our west, so it's in that sort of position, still that ridge in the central Atlantic, and then we've got a ridge up here to our northeast. So the flow of the jet this time is going... Uh, rather like that. And this should place us onto the warmer side of the jet. So we should, although still unsettled, we should be starting to pull up the air from a southerly or southwesterly direction. And that should be substantially uh, warmer air that's coming up as well. So an increase in temperature there as we go from the 4th through to the 11th, but probably still quite unsettled. And then we go through to week three and four, and this one takes us from the 11th through to the 25th of May. And uh, weaker signals, but we've still got this trough out to the west of Ireland. Uh, then not much else going on. There's a trough over sort of uh, eastern parts and uh, northeastern parts of uh, Russia, or northwestern parts of Russia. So it looks like the jet stream will probably be doing something like that. And although it doesn't really show a ridge, through the west of Europe, I would have thought there should be a ridge in that position. So we could be under an area of high pressure there and sending the jet stream up to the north through those two weekly periods from the 11th to 25th. You've got to bear in mind that's a two weekly anomaly. So that's why uh, the colours look a bit weaker because it, rather than a one week anomaly, it's a two week anomaly. It might be transition, it might be something like uh, week three, so and then week four places under an area of high pressure, something like that. But I think that could be okay. That could be relatively warm and dry through that middle part of uh, May. Let's have a look at the uh, mid-latitude view then, uh, based on the JMA uh, month head forecast. Again, these are, uh, charts are breaking down into week periods. The first week period will take us over 27th of April 
April through to the 4th of May. British Arts is just here in the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. A reminder of the uh, week one, 500 million dollar high dollar, which is very unsettled, sending that trough of below average heights through the UK. And to ourselves, we've got a dip in the jet, doing something like that with the jet stream. So we're on the cold side of the jet, and we are unsettled as well. So temperature anomalies of the week ahead are coming out colder than average, and quite substantially so. Uh, actually, if we have a look at the uh, scale there. So we're going down to between uh, 2 and 3 degrees uh, colder than average, I think, for um, many parts of the UK. In the week ahead, significantly cold and average temperature anomalies. And also, you'll not be surprised to know it's unsettled because we've got that trough of below average heights uh, over to the south of the UK. So precipitation is coming out above average. So temperatures below average, precipitation above average. Not a very inspiring week to start us off. We go through to uh, week two, which is the 4th through to the 11th of May, with the below average heights now more centred to our west. We have got some ridge. You can't see Scandinavia uh, and uh, Northern Europe on this view, but uh, we can. We know that we've got the area of above average heights away to our northeast uh, over there. So it looked like we should be sending the flow of the jet up like that and possibly pulling up some warmer air from a southerly or southwest direction. Now, it does show the temperatures, uh, temperature anomalies improving. They're not anything to get all that excited about, but they are lifting up compared to what we're seeing in week one. Going back closer to average, if you like, not particularly warm, but going back closer to average. Um, much of Eastern Europe, by the way, turning uh, really quite warm indeed, so a bit of a, bit of a heat wave going on there. And then we go through to uh, weeks three and four, which is the 11th to the 25th of May, uh, with the top of below average heights again out to our west and weakening. Uh, otherwise, not much else to go on, but we thought probably doing something a bit like that with the flow with the gem. So therefore, maybe under uh, a ridge of high pressure, if anything. The precipitation anomaly for this two-week period looks still a little bit above average for western parts of the country, but most areas actually coming out a bit drier than average. Remember, it's a two-week period, so it might be uh, transitional. And then the, the temperature anomaly, I should say, uh, is going uh, above average. So temperatures are lifting up there as we go through those, um, those middle two weeks of May. So although it does look as though we're probably going to have quite a cold and settled uh, start to May, actually... Overall, the month might not be shaping up too bad. It might be a relatively pleasant um, month that is unfolding here, ring between the lines with the JMA. But let's have a look at CFS V2 and see what that is showing. So again, we've got 500 bit of our heights broken down into weekly bits to start us off with the CFS. We've uh, got the first week, which is the 27th of April through to the 4th of May. On this view, green and blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. And then orange, red, yellow extrapolates to above average heights, which is high pressure. So good agreement between the two models for the weekend. We've got this ridge in the middle part of the Atlantic. Then we've got this very deep trough to our north and also extending down through the UK and Western Europe. We're still on the cold side of the jet here for the first week coming week, um, doing something like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So again, it looks cold, colder than average and unsettled. And uh, as I say, there might even be a little bit of snow potential for Monday across some parts of the country. The last day of April might have some snow. And I will have more about that in today's second video update coming up this afternoon. Then we go through to week two, which is the 4th through to the 10th of May. Now, this is covering the bank holiday uh, period, of course. And it still looks very unsettled, actually, with the CFS, with below average heights pretty much through uh, the UK and uh, much of Western Europe as well. We've got above average heights uh, still in the Central Atlantic and building up to the east and northeast of the country. So it looks like, I think we're still on the cold side of the jet, really, there. Uh, doing something like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So not particularly good, and not as good, I don't think, that as what the JMA is showing uh, for the 4th through to the 10th of May. Then we go through to uh, week 3, and this does look better. This is the 11th through to the 17th 
of May with above average heights over Scandinavia, the area of below average heights being pushed out to the northwest of us, and uh, so the flow and the jet should be doing something like that. So we're going on to the warm side of the jet there, and probably pulling up the air from a southeasterly or maybe even southerly direction. So that should be a good deal drier and warmer for uh, week three. And then week four looking like this, with above average heights to our north and northeast. I mean, otherwise, not much else going on. Uh, it's possible we might have some sort of thundery low pressure in this area, maybe. Uh, so I'll add a question mark into there. Possibly threatening some uh, thundery conditions from the south. Uh, but overall, that still looks reasonably uh, pleasant, reasonably warm and dry, I would have thought, there from the uh, 18th through to the 24th of May. So it takes a little bit longer to get to where the JMA is. But I think between between lines, both models, uh, despite the dodgy start, are probably going for a reasonably uh, pleasant May. Uh, actually, let's have a look at temperature anomalies. The week ahead, the 27th of April through to the 3rd of May, is coming out substantially colder than average for the UK and for much of Central and Northern Europe as well. So, uh, really cool temperatures in the week ahead. I'm afraid week two is also coming out colder than average. This is the 4th through to the 10th of May, with below average temperature anomalies continuing. That encompassing the bank holiday period, of course. Actually, the shorter range models are hinting, and we'll discuss this in the second video, and then with the bank holiday weekend update, the shorter range models are hinting that the weather might start to settle down and warm up even by the uh, bank holiday weekend. So, maybe these uh, longer range models are a little bit too slow, inside to get this improvement going. We'll have to wait and see. We go through to week three, which is the 11th through to the 17th of May. And by then, the temperature is back close to average. Notice much of uh, Europe is turning substantially warmer than average. Taking a long time to back that warmth into the west of Europe, though. And then we go through to week four, and finally we do get some slightly above average uh, temperature anomalies. I do mean slightly above average, only uh, in these uh, pale sort of lemon uh, colours, which is an anomaly of around half a degree above average. So again, nothing to be overly excited about. But it is a bit warmer anyway from the 18th through to the 24th of May. I think the CFS is a bit pessimistic with this. I think it's uh, a bit slow in starting to lift those temperatures uh, back up after what will be a cold start, definitely. We will have a cold start to May, but I think it's uh, I think it's a little bit slow in lifting those temperatures up. Finally, the precipitation. So the uh, week one CFS precipitation anomaly going from the 27th of April through to the 3rd of May comes out wetter than average for England and Wales, closer to average for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Then week two, the 4th through to the 10th of May, uh, that comes out with generally uh, above average precipitation again. So certainly an unsettled and cool start to May if this model is correct. Week three goes to average as the signal begins to uh, weaken. And then week four, Again, quite weak signals, but average to maybe slightly drier than average precipitation there in week four, the 18th through to the 24th of May. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, and what we can say is that both models are agreeing on a dismal uh, week to come. So uh, from today through to uh, next week, it all looks rather poor indeed. The temperature anomaly is substantially colder than average, and the precipitation anomaly is above average, especially so for England and Wales. After that, improvements are predicted. Um, we've got uh, uh, differing between models, but models are... Uh, our CFS is particularly slow in bringing these improvements to us. They do eventually, by the middle of May, get to warmer and drier conditions. It's going to be a case of how quickly that happens. As I say, the shorter range models are actually going for this warmer, drier weather to be in place, even by the bank holiday weekend. So I've given you a little bit of a spoiler, I suppose, uh, what we're going to be talking about in the second uh, video coming up later on today, and also in the bank holiday weekend uh, update which we'll do tonight. They are both looking at the moment, the short range models are both looking quite 
uh, decent for the Bank Holiday weekend. But the CFS and the JMA are differing about how uh, quickly that improvement sets up. By the middle of May, they're both indicating something warmer and drier appearing. And I think the CFS in particular is probably being a little bit pessimistic in how quickly or how slowly, actually, it's uh, getting these improvements going. So hopefully, after quite a cold and unsettled start to May, we might be in for a month that isn't too bad, actually, uh, reading between the lines. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. Now, these orange rolls are highly experimental, so they are subject to chopping and changing. We'll see what they're showing again when we do JMA Friday next week. Today's second video update will be with you after lunch, and we'll be looking at uh, next week's 10 days. We've got risk of torrential rain, gale force winds, and maybe a little bit of snow on Monday, and then possibly, would you believe, by the bank holiday weekend, heading into something that's rather summer-like. So, again, lots to keep us on our toes, and we'll have more about all of that in today's second video update coming up this afternoon. So come back for that. Uh, and that's all for now. Thanks for watching.